Hello and welcome back to another Average Tech Fan edition of Cruising Off Duty. I'm Craig, your Average Tech Fan, and we're gonna do another episode on the Mavic 2 Pro. It's gonna be a little different because one of my Patreons in the comments after the last episode, Muir Patterson, you know who you are, you've been a patron for a while and I thank you. In case you don't know what Patreon is, it's sort of like crowdfunding. Uh, Cruising Off Duty has that set up. Uh, if you don't wanna do that, that's fine. Uh, there's another way you can help the channel if you're gonna buy something like this or any of the camera gear that I often show I usually put links in the description if you click on one of those links It's called an affiliate link. It costs you nothing what it does It brings you to DJI in this case for this drone or any of the other drones It just lets them know that you came from our channel and that way they give us a little teeny weeny bit of commission back Which is nice. It doesn't cost you anything a little less money goes to the big corporation a little bit of love comes to the channel And we do appreciate it. Anyway, we're in the comments said you know what, I really loved your uh, video last year when you first got the Mavic Pro where you flew it in your house. And I think I know why he thought that was funny and worth doing again because I actually crashed it into the wall. So let's hope it doesn't do that this time because I'm gonna do that because he is a beloved patron of mine. I'm gonna do what he wants, which is see how this flies in a house. I'm gonna try two things. First, let's just see how it flies. If it stays stable, it doesn't drift into any walls, I hope. Uh, with a lot more sensors on, it should not crash. The word is should. Now remember when you're flying manually, the two side sensors are not on. So you can actually go sideways into a wall, but you should not be able to go forward into a wall or backward. So test one, does it fly inside the house? And I think what's gonna happen is it's just gonna beep incessantly once it takes off. Because with so many sensors looking everywhere, if something is within, I think it's about six feet of the drone, it will beep. In the past with the original Mavic Pro, it would only really beep from the front. The downward sensor was just showing it how to land. The front was the only thing it really recognized, and so it would beep if something was in front. But if you stood beside your drone, it wouldn't beep. Now I think it's gonna beep all the time. <laughs> the whole time it's flying in the house, it's probably gonna beep. The next thing I'm gonna do, if it does do that, I'm gonna go into the active tracking mode. I'm gonna try and track myself as I walk down that hallway, and we'll see if it follows me down this hallway. Now I know I'm getting risky here. And then if it does follow me, I'm gonna turn around the corner and go towards my family room and see if the drone will actually follow me around the corner again without hitting any walls. Now when I'm in active tracking mode, these two sensors should be on. So it should know the walls are beside it. So hopefully that'll eliminate any possibility of it turning the corner and banging into a wall at the same time. So I haven't done this yet, obviously. I'm filming this first and then I'm gonna try flying it. So wish me luck. Okay, let's do this. Wish me luck. Where this crash is this on your head, okay? You did you made me do this. Let's do this. I'm scared. Take off. I recorded my phone screen, which is actually the controller for the, the remote, and you can see that there's an obstacle avoidance error. Please revise flight route. So it's saying it's not gonna autonomously fly through the house. I didn't realize this at the time. I can still manually turn it, and you can see that when I tried to step forward, expecting it to back up away from me, it wasn't gonna back up because there are objects behind it. You see on the screen, they're saying there's objects in front, there's objects behind. It wasn't gonna do anything. It was just gonna sit there if I uh, didn't physically move the joysticks to get it to go up or down or left or right. Super, super stable. So, let's go into active tracking mode and see if it'll as I walk down the hall. Okay, if you look at the screen, you'll notice a green dot on my chest. The drone has decided I'm a human being and therefore something that can be tracked. It does the same thing with cars and other things, but I'm pressing the green button and nothing is happening. It's not highlighting me like it should. So I go into the menu and see if I'm doing something wrong and I don't see anything, so I go back. And uh, finally, I just have to kind of put a box around me and uh, then it finally tracks me. Yeah, so there I am. That's what it should look like when I first pushed the green button. But you notice there's a thing just below the six foot thing that says aircraft is too low. I don't know if it was a combination of all the sensors are always on saying that there's things in the way and the aircraft's too low, but it just would not go into the normal tracking mode where it starts following me. As you can see, the camera watches me until I go around the corner, loses me for a second, and when I come back around, it catches me again, which is smart. Uh, you know, and then I decide, okay, I'll come closer. Will it back up when I get closer? Nope. And that's probably due to the fact that the sensors behind it are saying that it cannot back up. So I go back in the menu. Am I doing something wrong? No, I'm still in track mode. I just finally get a little frustrated that it just won't track me. I didn't notice that little aircraft too low warning in the middle of the screen. It, it is pretty small on a phone, but that has to be the reason that it wouldn't track me. 
too low to start and obstacles are ahead and behind. So yeah, I'm trying profile, but that's usually when you're walking or moving and it goes from the side. We don't want that. There's not enough room in my hallway for it to fly beside me. So again, I try maybe moving the camera up. Maybe it was too low, but watch when I finally get it to uh, track me again, I circle myself and the camera automatically points at the center of mass, which is my belly. And I back up again and of course, the drone doesn't follow me. And when I realize that I decide, okay, well maybe if I go towards it, I definitely notice that the drone is moving as I go left and right, sort of from one side to the other, it does follow me with the camera. It's just not following me with the drone. So that's the end of that. And just to confirm the drone is not frozen, I actually manually fly it into my hallway. And uh, yeah, it goes a little bit. I could have forced it through, but uh, there didn't seem to be a point because the whole point of this wasn't really to see if I could fly my drone through tiny spaces, more that I wanted to see if it would track me. And in a way it does, it tracks me with the camera. It just doesn't track me by flying around after me. So yeah, I try one more time. Eh, no, no, not gonna come and get me. So that's it. So now I wanna take it outside and see if maybe active track isn't working at all on my drone. Again, I still don't see that aircraft too low thing for a little bit. I am sort of surprised it doesn't back up when I put my hand in front of it or anything. I guess it's because it senses obstacles, but that's kind of dangerous. I mean, if you flew this inside your house and your kids are there and they just happen to run towards the drone, it's not going to back up. It's going to zap them with those blades. So keep that in mind. I finally noticed the aircraft too low warning on my screen. So on my screen right here at the bottom, it says aircraft is too low. So let's put it up a little higher just to see if that little warning goes away. But I don't think I'll walk in my family room because the ceilings are lower and I don't, I don't want to crash my drone. So let's go with that. Notice how the aircraft too low warning goes away, but as we go up higher, it starts to have an obstacle above it. It's a very smart drone. It knew it was there. I kind of just stopped flying higher because I didn't want to risk it. And this is a cathedral ceiling, but I know my hallways aren't nearly this tall. So what's the point, right? But I try and, uh, track myself again just to see if now that the aircraft too low warning is gone and you can see that the green bar goes around me so I was able to just push the green button this time and it tracked me I did need to make a box around myself and just like last time it's following me with the camera which is cool but it's not actually flying anywhere I guess as long as there's obstacles around it just sort of sits there and says hey I can't crash if I stay right here but I have no problem pointing my camera at you so that's the end of that that's the end of that and I just bring it down and land it. it. Had no problem tracking me, but it would not follow me in my house. I think it was a case of it won't follow me because A, there's too many obstacles around. And it starts off already saying there's obstacles around when it takes off. So even though it will track me with the camera, it's, it's like it won't follow me. I think what I'm gonna have to do next, and that'll probably be the next episode, I'm gonna take it out to a forest. I'm gonna start in an open area. I'm gonna have it track me. It should follow me. And then as I go down a trail, let's see if it follows me down the trail. So that'll be on the next episode. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you learned something. It is super solid in your house. I mean, yeah, it did not move. The only movement that ever happened was when I touched the joysticks. So yeah, could I fly it around my house? Sure. But um, do I want to try and fly it around my house just to take a risk of bumping into something? Probably not. That's what that little Tello is for. This is the Tello. This is a $99 drone. But anyways, this is a fun little drone you buy, and this is the one you whip around your house. You, you fly it with your phone only, there's no controller. And it's fun, and it, it's got prop guards, so you can bang walls and it doesn't do anything. But that's an indoor drone. A $1,500 American Mavic 2 Pro. Probably not the one to just goof around inside your house, but there you go. You could theoretically film inside your house. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If so, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel or the channels because this is right now going out on the Average Tech Fan and Cruising Off Duty. And until next time, this is Craig signing off. Wishing you safe cruising of your drone. Later. Come back for the next episode when I do the object tracking outside in a forest. And it's pretty impressive what this drone will do to avoid branches. Now let's see what happens when it gets to this branch. He's going down. That is freaking awesome. Oh, he's going down again. He's going down again. Oh, I made it by the branch. Oh, there's some really small branches there though. He's following me by being like three feet off the ground. Ugh. Oh my God, that is freaky.